Hello and welcome back to Hey Manager with me, Alex, and today, Football Manager 22, we get edging ever so close to the release date of the beta and also the 9th of November when it gets released formally. We're so close to it now, probably we're looking at, if it's two weeks before the actual release, you're looking at around about the 26th, I want to say, 26th of October maybe, that we get to see it. So another eight days from today, which is very exciting. So today I'm going to go over the top five features for me, the new features in the game, that's going to really make your experience much better for Football Manager. So the first one we're going to look at is the match experience. I'd probably say... What would you call it now? The, the match engine, the actual look of the game. So the match experience you're looking at having players who on the dribble like turn in and out and stuff like that. It just makes for a bit more of a realistic look to your 3D set. So F FIFA is a, a, a perfect example. If you could mix the FIFA graphics with a Football Manager game, it'd be sensational. But that's just not realistic. And I quite like how sort of retro -y and interesting the Football Manager the, the actual engine is it looks very interesting but this year they have focused a lot more on dribbling because last year you seem to have your player he just stand up sort of hover around the ball it wasn't that dynamic whereas this year they've got the pullbacks drag backs if your player has flair bit of bit of flair involved just a lot more fluid movement should you say for the players which looks a lot well quite a lot better should i say um for for you people that are out there experiencing it doesn't really affect many of you who play on 2D, but the match experience for me is probably much, much better this year, as you can see. I've got a little clip for you. As they pull it back, you can see just for the, the drag backs and the little the little flicks and touches in there. It just makes for a bit more of a fluid game. It's a tiny, tiny improvement, but something to look forward to and something that just looks a lot better on the eyes. Next up, I've obviously got to put this in. It's a bit of an obvious one. It's the data hub. The data hub is such an exciting prospect for football manager users because we do enjoy the stats side of football. These football manager users have always enjoyed stats, always enjoyed attributes, stuff like that. Even FIFA involved an expected goals um, stat this year in FIFA, which is interesting. But for me, the data is so much better. It's so, so much better. You can see where your, your team lies compared to other teams in the Premier League. I assume you can also do it for other teams in the Champions League. I don't know that for sure yet, but I'd love to see maybe you could possibly do that because then you can you can compare yourself with Premier League clubs and then the elites of Europe. You can compare yourself with them. General performance is a nice one to indicate how well you're doing in terms of other teams in the league. Possession, shooting, everything. You can look at previous matches. You can look at um, the, the other the other teams, sort of how they're doing and stuff, and all, all sorts basically. Shot maps. Defending, I think there's there's new uh, a new a chart, would you call it, or a a, um, a map, would you say that has strips through the middle of the actual pitch, which shows you how much possession is in which area. Just stuff that's so much more interesting when you when you play a tactic, and you want to know what's wrong with that tactic instead of just looking at the bottom of the actual tactic screen, which tells you the small bits and pieces. You can now actually look at the stats and see where you can improve. So you can bring in players to improve that, bring in players to sort of uh, balance that out. Or if you're over in a certain area, you can pull back on that to make other things better. You can, you can really see how your your tactic impacts on the game. That's why I think the data is going to be so, so important and so cool to look at. As you can see here, you've got your own personalized area as well pick what you want you can edit it so you can go and see your own your own page which is something that i want to see now we go on to the small small bits i'd probably say visualize tactics this is quite an interesting one so for me when you look at the the map on your tactic it normally shows up red and you don't know where you can you can sort of guess which player is going to have impact that area but you don't know like realistically how many so having this little small addition where you can see how many players impact an area and how well they impact it or how how or is it if it's a lack of impact should I say so the influence they call it in the areas high positive influence low positive influence uh high negative influence low negative influence it's it's decent enough that you can now see how many so if if you play like a 4231 you're going to see there's a massive gap in that between that um 
the, the back four and the, and the midfield too. You're going to see there's a gap there where there's not much, there's not many players that sort of impact in that area, if you know what I mean. And then as you get, if you switch out to a 5-3-2 or something like that, you're going to see the wings are going to be much, much like less populated with these little balls that indicate the influence in this area. So it, so it does allow you to understand how and where you need to improve and where you might be conceding from, which is just a nice little touch. So that's number three. Number four, a big one for me, squad registration. Huge for me. This was such a faff last year where you had to click the drop down menu what was it in or out and then you could also there was just loads of stuff going on and then i think what they've done as well is take away the players that are actually under 23 or you don't have to do anything for squad registration with them i don't think i'd have to make sure of that um but it's just so much easier having a ticker across if you want him in or don't it's just so much easier to register your squad year in year out so that is a massive improvement for me because it just makes it so much user friendly the ui the user interface is just so much more friendly and then the last one i've spoke a bit fast for all this but this is they're not really got an image for it but i have got miles jacobson who is the the um i guess the director at sports interactive who make football manager he has now said a huge change for long-term saves as the quality of youth players coming through in different nations will now change depending on the nation's standings in the world of football so say for example you start a save in the danish league denmark aren't particularly up there in terms of rank but it's say for example you start bringing in players and introducing staff and you get the training rapport and you get people like that to really boost your club and you start becoming a bit of a European club where you get, you're get in the Europa League and then all of a sudden you've got quite a strong side, you're doing well with a side, you're in the Champions League, you're representing the standings of Denmark are slowly going to rise, the reputation and the standings will obviously rise because you're going to bring in that great talent from the Danish, from your own academies and then that's going to be sparked throughout the league and try and populate the league which then gets Denmark even higher in the standings which then the youth players coming through in that nation will then start to become even better and it's it's much more dynamic so you're going to still have your, play, your teams like France, England, Germany who start producing these brilliant players but as the standings go Brazil will they keep you might not find that many Brazilian wonder kids. And if your save progresses so that, for example, Asia, maybe you, you try and get as big a, how would you put it, as big as a, a reputation as you can in Asia, where you're building sides, you're bringing players in, you're changing the dynamics of it. All the players that you're bringing in, the training facilities, the staff are so high and so excellent, the facilities standards, that your your team then produces such fabulous talents that... The standings of China or an Asian side would, for example, rise. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at China challenging for the World Cup. It makes it a bit more dynamic. It obviously will be limited by certain leagues' uh, rules and regulations and stuff, stuff like that. But for me, this makes such an important change. Because you could go to Juventus, but Italy could be producing the worst type there's been no talent through the Italian youth system, which makes zero sense because Italy are thriving so much and have the best talent. It just makes zero sense. So now they've actually changed that. So that the dynamic youth ratings will change. So you can see if you're in England, I think you'll get pretty good players from now onwards. You're not guaranteed it, but you're going to get good enough players to put into your sides. I'm hoping anyway, because that is a big change going forward. So, those are the top five changes, or new features, should I say, for Football Manager 2022. Coming out soon, I'll probably give it another eight days, nine days, maybe ten days before the beta is released. I am obviously doing a save. I'm going to keep that under wraps for now, keep that a bit of a secret. I might do one more video before it comes out, just to show you uh, who I will be using. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this year's Football Manager. If you didn't like the video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are new and subscribe as well for the upcoming FM22 beta series and I shall catch you in the next episode. From me Alex, have a great day. Ciao.